These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. <clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? It's Grim Green back here today. And do you wanna talk about illicit markets? Cause I wanna talk about illicit markets. A black market or an illicit market comes into existence when there's a vacuum in the market, when a high value, high demand product is either overtaxed outright banned and made illegal or very poorly regulated. A good example I think of this is in states like California, where there's a really very high cigarette tax, there is also a very, very robust illicit market for those highly taxed cigarettes. All of these things contribute to what we would call an illicit market. And yeah, we see it a lot with cigarettes in the US and places like Australia with really high cigarette taxes have very robust cigarette illicit markets. Very, very robust and very intense. Breaking news out of Melbourne, another tobacconist has been firebombed overnight as tobacco wars escalate across the Victorian capital. A car has also been found torched in a nearby street illicit cigarette markets. Well, now thanks to the FDA, we have the proliferation of the illicit single use disposable vape market in the United States of America, because when a very high value, high demand product is suddenly made illegal, it doesn't decrease the demand for that product. It simply moves that market right into the illicit market where there's no regulations, no checking for safety, no IDs. And it's not just disposables that have this sort of booming illicit market now. FDA also denied to the market thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of bottled e-liquid brands and millions of Americans were using bottled e-liquid to stay off of combustible tobacco cigarettes. So there is a large illicit market of bottled e-liquid and the FDA's regulations are so stringent on nicotine that some of these illicit e-liquid manufacturers have kind of stopped using nicotine and started using other things. One thing that I've seen in the United States in a bottled e-liquid is something called niximide, which isn't nicotine, so it doesn't fall under the FDA's authority, but it tricks your brain and your body thinks it's getting nicotine. I am really, really going to try my best to track down some links for the description that YouTube will be okay with, but I know that's going to be difficult. According to a website. Niximide is made from a proprietary alternative solution to nicotine patent pending. Niximide is structurally different from nicotine dependent of its stereochemistry and not falling under the Tobacco Control Act. Niximide has been specifically formulated to deliver the same satisfaction, pleasure, and enjoyment as traditional tobacco products and nicotine vaping for adult consumers using a proprietary blend with the main ingredient being nicotinamide. Niximide, nicotinamide, I don't know, and I'm not saying that these are less or more dangerous than just simple nicotine vaping, but I'm saying the potential is there and the potential wouldn't even exist if FDA had just regulated these products based on the best available science. We wouldn't need to wonder if niximide was safe to use over time or safe to use at all. Nicotinamide is a form of vitamin B found in food and used as a dietary supplement and medications. Side effects are minimal. At high doses, liver problems may occur. Normal amounts are safe during pregnancy. Nicotinamide is in the vitamin B family of medications, specifically vitamin B3 complex. It is an amide of nicotinic acid. Foods that contain nicotinamide include yeast, meat, milk, and green vegetables. Look, they have some information and they even have some toxicology reports on niximide. But the bigger point is that niximide didn't even need to exist. Most likely wouldn't have existed if FDA had regulated these products based on the best available science, I think. And in Australia, in some illicit e-liquid bottles, some vapors there have turned to six 
methyl nicotine. Thankfully, Dr. Colin Mendelson in Australia has a blog post that I can link to in the description with a lot of information about what this 6-methyl nicotine is. 6-methyl nicotine is a chemical related to nicotine. It has the same effects as nicotine, but is much more potent. 6-methyl nicotine has been around for over 50 years, but there's little research onto it. Some research suggests it might be more psychotoxic than nicotine, meaning it may be harmful or toxic to cells in the body. However, confirmation of this is needed. It may be as safe as nicotine, but it also may have unknown side effects. And again, I'm not saying that these products are better or worse or safer or more safe than just the nicotine that we've come to know and love. I'm just saying that the possibility is there for them to be much worse. And the possibility didn't need to exist if these were regulated properly. I think Dr. Colin Mendelson puts it better than I could say it. The use of 6-methyl nicotine is an example of how harsh regulatory restrictions can cause potential harm by forcing people to create workarounds. For example, using alternatives of unknown safety. Sometimes this can lead to harmful outcomes. It is not yet clear if 6-methyl nicotine is harmful, but the possibility is there. We have about 15 years roughly and thousands and thousands of studies done on nicotine vaping, nicotine liquids. Nicotine vaping is harm reduction for people who smoke cigarettes. Vaping 6-methyl nicotine? Mm. I don't know, we don't have 15 years of data on that. But I do know that it didn't need to exist in the first place. Anyway, I, I think that's all I got for today, everybody. I sure would love it if you subscribed and gave this video a like, but even if you don't, let's stay informed, let's think critically, let's stay cigarette smoke free, literally every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so.